Resident Evil has a wealth of one-time characters that play their role and are often never heard from again. You can go onto Twitter any day of the week, search for the name of your favourite forgotten character, and there will always be fans campaigning for their return, even if they turned into a giant green axe monster and died. Steve Burnside has his haters, but equally he has his fans. However you may feel about him, I'm here to teach you a few things about his development and things that you may not have known. I'm Steve for First Aid Spray, and these are five facts about Steve. Steve Burnside It's curtains for Steve. Alright, let's start with a simple one. Oftentimes in media, including Resident Evil, new designs and looks are based on existing characters in influential art. Or just straight up actors. Capcom doesn't go out of its way to make these inspirations public, although some developers have mentioned them in interviews and some are a little more obvious than others. It's fairly easy to assume Steve Burnside's original look was based on 1990s heartthrob Leonardo DiCaprio, whose curtain fringe was a trademark. He displayed a boyish playfulness in the press and in certain roles that wasn't unlike young Burnside. However, it appears that Capcom felt this homage was a little too on the nose, and by the time of the game's director's cut re-release a year later, Steve lost the curtains for a new do. We reached out to Mr. DiCaprio for comment, but we are sadly still waiting for his response. Steve's Tattoo Whilst not quite as immediately obvious, Steve's design changed again when he and the events of Code Veronica appeared on our screens for the fourth time in Darkside Chronicles' retelling titled Game of Oblivion. This continued Steve's look once more from the CVX redesign, but added a few more details due to the advancement of graphics, including, most importantly, his prison tattoo. Only occasionally visible in cutscenes, Steve has a barcode tattooed on the top of his left forearm. This is, we can presume, a mark placed by Umbrella during his stay at Rockfort Prison, a dark nod to the real-life tragedies of the Auschwitz concentration camp and how prisoners were quite literally numbered by tattoo on their skin. Code Veronica in general has a lot of references to the Nazi party in both the final game and even more so in its concept art, and this seems to be a reference to those underlying inspirations to the Ashford family. Or he really, really, really is into cyberpunk. The Legacy of Steve Most players remember Steve as the teenage hanger-on for Claire, with generally unfavorable memories of his voice acting. Huh. That was too close. But I found something, thanks to you. Looks cool, huh? But whilst he hasn't appeared in a game outside of this story for reasons related to... Uh... Well, he's dead. Probably. Steve has had some major, major side effects on the wider world of Resident Evil. Whilst it isn't in the Japanese script, the localization team did give him a nod in the English version of Resident Evil Revelations 2, when Claire, upon picking up the game's first handgun remarks, it's more reliable than any person, showing that her short relationship with Steve has left its mark on her. On the bigger scale, however, Wesker, playing behind the scenes, managed to extract a sample of the precious T. Veronica virus from Steve's deceased body, which many years later, how exactly we don't know, found its way into the hands of Resident Evil 6's Carla, and would play a role in the creation of the world-ravaging pathogen, the C-Virus. Probably not the kind of legacy you want to leave, but a legacy nonetheless. Arguably a better legacy than his voice acting, though. No. More than just Code Veronica. As previously mentioned, the events of Rockfort Island's outbreak and Claire and Steve's adventures to escape both it and the Antarctic base have been the basis for a number of games. Code Veronica, the director's cut of Code Veronica X, Survivor 2 Code Veronica, which was a dream version of the story, and retold once more in an on-rails shooter, Darkside Chronicles. Since then, he's been name-dropped in many files and games, like Resident Evil 5, and has a flashback scene in the manga Heavenly Island. Steve, like many characters in the Resident Evil universe, has repeatedly popped up in side games and the like in Minna to Biohazard Clan Master, SNK vs Capcom Cardfighters Clash, and Teppen. The most bizarre of these appearances, however, 
is a level in 2005 game Beautiful Joe Double Trouble, which has a whole level based on Resident Evil. Spotted in paintings in the background are several key Resident Evil characters such as Claire, Jill, Carlos and Steve! Yep, he got picked over the likes of Chris and Leon, so I guess someone on the development team really likes Code Veronica. The Foreshadowing Steve has often been a playable character in his appearances, even if they were only fleeting. However, Darkseid Chronicles sees him as one of two playable protagonists for most of the retelling. That being said, refinements aside, he's only ever had two different looks, unless you count Steve from the Code Veronica concept art that is wildly, wildly different. Finally, a substitute player for the Poseidorox. That is a Final Fantasy X reference. I will be here all week. Aside from his camo cargo pants and prisoner shirt, he does only have one costume that's unlocked in Darkseid Chronicles if the player has the accuracy to get an S rank on every Game of Oblivion scenario. His very goofy gunslinging western look is, I suppose, appropriate for a dorky kid who wields dual pistols, but there's also a certain ominousness to it. Patched onto the back of the jacket are the words Axe Monster, a horrible foreboding reference to his eventual fate. And that's five facts about Steve Burnside. Let us know in the comments below what you thought of this video, which character you'd like to see us cover next, and if you think Steve Burnside is still alive in a tube somewhere. Yes, we do know you're out there, Steve Stamps. I've been Steve for First Aid Spray, and swore you've got to cut this short, but it's been fun. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.